guys, it's Autosode time. I hope you guys are enjoying these extra episodes that we're trying to get up for you. We've got some really cool friends and we wanted to tell you more about them. So sit back, chillax, and enjoy this new Autosode. Here we are. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Autosode. I am super pumped to have my friend, and, and you know what? I should have probably asked you this, Steve. Is it Gonzalves or Gonzalves? Well, you said it perfectly the second time. Perfect. Uh, Thank Gonzalves. God. I never know. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for asking. Uh, either way, I, I, I'm I'm introduced in 40 different ways. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> but thank you. It's very kind of you. Oh, of course. Of course. So I have, as you've heard, Steve Gonzalves here with us um, this week. Actually, this is going up the day before the premiere of Ghost Nation. It's in its second season. It's one of the good ones, people. I talk about it on the podcast all the time. And he's also about to release a paranormal documentary. But first, let's talk about Ghost Nation, Steve. This is season two. That's right. Yeah, season two coming out uh, Wednesday, the 22nd of April. Very cool. So tell tell people who haven't watched Ghost Nation, give them a little synopsis of, if you will. Of course, yeah. Ghost Nation, uh, all around the country, uh, we have a network of teams, or we've developed a network of teams. And even if they're not in our network, any team uh, that is sort of at a crossroads, don't know where to turn for their case, they've been getting in touch with us, you know, and, and we take those cases and, uh, you know, Along with that team, uh, we bring the case uh, hopefully to to resolution. That's our our end goal. There is, you know, and, and a lot of times we we do that. You know, our previous work was very much you know what you'd see in, in on most shows. Honestly, what you see is a you know a bit of a, a preliminary investigation. There really just isn't the time to do a full blown you know. Uh, but on this show, we really take the time and and do what's necessary. Uh, For instance, our season opener is a two hour episode, right? It's 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Whoa. Yeah. And it wasn't supposed to be two hours, you know, but as the investigation naturally and organically unfolded, uh, we had to go to the the network and and say, hey, guys, uh, we think we need, you know, way more time here. Some things just unraveled that we can't wrap it up in in two or three days. You know, we just can't, or this family is going to be left hanging. And luckily, you know, being executive producers on this show, Jay and I, it's a a conversation and not just get out of here, you know, you're wasting our money. You know, it's it's a conversation. And in that conversation, they said, uh, you know what, that makes total sense take as much time as, as you need. And that's how it became a two hour episode. Cause there were things that, to be honest, that phone call was, you know, we need to uh, get the, the police involved. Maybe, you know, we need, we have, oh, to get wow. yeah, it was, it was really, really intense, you know, and I'm not giving anything away. That's not in the, you know, the, the, the preview for the, the coming season, but uh, yeah. So it's a show that is very organic. It happens as it happens. And it happens like that. We, we make a, a phone call and say, hey, we need this. We need that. Things that we don't plan ahead of time because we don't know. You know, if, if something happens and we need ground penetrating radar, we need to make it happen. And they allow us to do that. It's a, a great relationship. Uh, and uh, yeah, that, that's that show in a, a big a nutshell for you. Well, God love the Travel Channel. I am an advocate day and night for the Travel Channel, but the fact that they let you do that, that's amazing. Yeah. I tell you what, you know, people will obviously think I say this because, you know, they are the network that airs our show, but (laughs) it's hard not to, uh, that they are just so wonderful. And uh, every single one of them uh, are just fantastic people. And they're fans of the genre. That's why they've embraced it so you know, so heavily. And, you know, they said they, they want to focus on paranormal, on mystery, on adventure, and of course, some travel at all, you know, is encompassed, but, uh, and, it, and it's been great. And they're fans of what we do, not just us, but the paranormal in general. They understand that there are many different ways to do it. And so they, they have a, they just said, you know, we want to be a platform for you guys to, to show, you know, what you're doing. That's amazing. You know, and it is a different relationship. You know, I've dealt with a lot of networks, a lot of production companies, a lot of 
And it was very much a, a, a suit and tie relationship, you know, and with the, the travel channel, uh, it's hugs and talking about horror movies and, and talking about, you know, of course the show too, but it's not, hello, sir. It's, Hey, how you been? What's going on? How are things? And, and they are always communicating and checking in and, and, uh, they're just super, super nice and, and sweet people. That's amazing. I just got the best good feels goosebumps after you said that. That's for somebody who's a fan of this. And and I do this because of you and, and your colleagues and the other people that have shows out like this. Um, and it's super, I was super stoked when travel went pretty much all paranormal all the time. And it's it makes me feel even better knowing that they're fans of it too. So that's why it works. So yay, that's amazing. Uh, they really are. Um, and, you know, it's just, they're they're so gracious. I mean, things I, I won't get into because it, it could be just, you know, but I mean, they sent me a birthday gift. You know, I've never had, a, in the 16 years I've been in television, I never had a network say, hey, happy birthday. <laughs> you know, it's like, what is going on with these people? You know, and it wasn't just a card, like it was a, a nice gift and a thoughtful one that they had to really think and put time into. Uh, yeah, it's, it's it's a pretty cool uh, relationship to have. And they understand that, you know, the investigation needs to be a, a certain way uh, for the relationship to, to work. And they're into it. And same with the production company. Awesome. Uh, you know, Ping Pong. Uh, the show came about in a way that you know, we were fortunate enough to, to have the relationship with the network and then approach production companies and hire a production company that, you know, we, we felt was a good match. Uh, Ping Pong was that production company we chose and they've been nothing but fantastic too because you can run into problems there as well. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, they've just been uh, been a dream to, to work with. That's amazing. It's And I, I love the fact that you sound so happy with where this has gone. And like I said before, if it weren't for you and your colleagues, I, I don't think the Travel Channel would be where it is at today. And I love the fact that they embrace everybody's different ways of investigating and everybody's different ways of approaching the paranormal. And I think that's what's making everything work right now. Absolutely. You know, it's kind of cool, actually, to be able to see all these different styles of investigating, different methods, protocols, different procedures, different pieces of equipment, all showcased on one network, one platform. And, uh, you know, people expect there to be some bumping of heads or some weirdness, but it couldn't be any farther from the truth. You know, some of my dearest friends are, are, are the Ghost Brothers and, and uh, you know, uh, Chip Coffee and then Amy and Adam and and I have some of the best times of my life with those people and, and you know Ghost Adventures uh, I get along with all of them great I've uh, had drinks and hung out with Zach he, he's the, cool everybody's awesome you know it's a very cool uh, relationship with everybody sounds like one big happy family and I love that so. You also, like I mentioned at the beginning of the show, have a paranormal documentary coming out. And I took this morning before we did this because I wanted it all to be fresh in my head and watched it. And oh my God, it's amazing. Tell us more. Alice Jackson, she owns the house and she had reached out to an agent, a booking agent I had at the time. Uh, a few different times and, and had told him about the house and had tried to, uh, you know, get my interest. And, and at one point, uh, a few things were really in, intriguing to me. And, and one was uh, that, you know, she hadn't uh, lived in the house or stayed overnight in the house for 10 years. She refused to, but loved the house so much. And she built it for certain reasons, you know, that had to do with love and family and, and mm -hmm. you know, didn't want to get rid of her to sell it. So she actually lived somewhere else but still owned the house and would go there sometimes during the day. And it had been that way for 10 years. Wow. Uh, and for that entire 10 years, uh, the house has been under an investigation and surveillance and not lived in. And uh, so they've accumulated, excuse me. Uh, so they've uh, accumulated, you know, 10 years uh, of data. And I thought that was pretty interesting. I had never heard of that before. 
Uh, yeah. There's been, you know, psychic studies and, and different studies that have lasted that long, but I've never heard of a, a single investigation that has gone that long, uncontaminated, that sort of thing. Uh, and then they, they started saying uh, that, uh, you know, they felt that the house or they were in a sense teaching what was there, how to communicate with them. And over time they've seen what they've told them sort of influencing how it communicates and the ways it communicates and uh, I thought that was rather interesting. Yes, I, that blew my mind. Yeah. And, and then the investigators just, you know, um, there are investigators all over the country, right? And it's it's no knock to any investigator anywhere, but uh, it's just in a way that some people, you know, have a, a larger reach in terms of resources than, than others. You know, there are some investigators that can get their hands into different organizations in a further reach than, than others, you know. So yeah. um, they were reaching out to me to try to get some help. After hearing about it a few different times, I said, okay, you know, I'm, I'm going to visit the house. I'm going to investigate it. And I did go there with them. I saw some interesting things, met the homeowner, uh, was blown away. It was adorable. And, uh, Alice. She, if she could read me bedtime stories, I would be one happy camper. <laughs> yeah, uh, she is a, a absolutely, uh, yeah, she's she's an amazing person. Uh, the local investigators were just so genuine and, and super cool. And, and uh, I could just tell that they sincerely needed some help. And, and I fell in love with, with everybody there that uh, I did go back a second time and investigated. And that's when I sort of realized that there was the potential here, uh, you know, to not only tell an amazing story, but uh, twofold to really get some answers for her. Through this process, uh, she did want to get answers, you know, so we used it uh, twofold, you know, and, and uh, it was pretty cool. It was awesome. Yeah, it was, it was very cool. And that's what we are as investigators is storytellers. I, I, I don't know. I just, I, I think that's why I'm so obsessed with this industry. I don't know what else to call it, but it's, it's just different stories than, you know, the average story out there. It's, it's got twists and it's got turns and I, I don't know. You guys did a great job though. And the investigators there seem very genuine and they just wanted answers. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, honestly, those guys are, you know, they're, uh, and, and gals, they were there for 10 years, literally uh, with no reward. You know, there's no reward for it. You just uh, form a, a relationship. You want to get to the bottom of it. You want to help the, the person. She treats them like family. They have a real bond and a real relationship. You know, I'll still, I still talk to them and they're like, Hey, we're at lunch, you know, we're doing, and it's all them, you know, they're all, they're like a family, even though they're not a family, you know, and, and there's a, a few sides to the documentary that we, we didn't quite, you know, have enough time to, to put in that sort of thing, you know, and they put so much time and effort into that. You know, you can imagine how that, for instance, might make you know, family members feel or, you know, friends. And it's like, well, why are you going to this house five nights a week for six hours? <laughs> you know, like what's yeah, going on? Yeah. Uh, but they did a dedication and, and a love for the homeowner and, and what, you know, what is happening there. And, and it was really cool to see. Yeah. I, again, back to what you had said earlier that these investigators were teaching spirits or whatever's there. I don't want to give away any spoilers. Um, how to communicate. And, and it, it kind of made right. me kind of blew my mind because you think about it. I mean, when I investigate places, I don't investigate people's homes because I'm afraid I'm going to screw it up, make activity greater, or, you know, I just don't want to screw up somebody's living situation. But I go to these places that are investigated all the time. And I think the super active ones have just been taught how to communicate over the years. It made all the sense in the world. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I'd thought of that previously in, in the sense of, you know, I bet they have sort of, you know, figured out ways that they can and can or, or whatever. But in terms of, uh, you know, using a haunted place as a training ground uh, was new to me. And that was, was pretty cool. So I, I love these stories. I, I'm so excited the way, you know, you're, your life is headed in this amazing direction. You've got all this good stuff about to drop and congratulations for that. Jeez. Thanks. Thank you. Very <laughs> nice of you. 
we're all very fortunate in the entertainment industry, any aspect of it. If you're entertaining people for a living, yeah, you're very, very fortunate. Absolutely. I totally agree. So I have one question for you because, I mean, you and I have known each other for a hot minute. Usually when we're together, we don't talk paranormal. We talk comic cons that we're at. We talk, you know, horror conventions <laughs> that we're at. Do you ever talk about your very first paranormal experience or what got you into this? Yeah, I mean, uh, for sure. The road for me uh, started just from interest and in, in fear, sort of. Mm -hmm. Something that happened when I was very, very young, but I think it's not related to how I got started in this. My first sort of, you know, there's Ghostbusters, of course, when you're a kid, you're watching that and you're thinking, Great. gosh, if that was real, how could I be one of those guys? That's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> you know, you know, I remember watching the movie The Entity, right? I wasn't supposed to be watching it, obviously. I was a young kid. And uh, a part really freaked me out. And I don't remember exactly what I said or what happened. My mom came in the room. She's like, why are you watching this? And I was all upset, maybe even crying. I don't know. I was a little kid. And she, uh, you know, relaxed me and, and told me it was, you know, make believe and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. And, um, but then I remember seeing in the credits, it said, you know, based on true events. And, and I was like, what? based on true events how's my mom just told me this was all make-believe yeah what do you mean yeah. based on true events you know uh, and i think i don't want to be quoted but i mean the real researcher i think was barry dr barry taff right i think so you know the true story behind it yeah. um and uh you know w got really afraid but um that sparked a, a big interest and in, and in i said well if I'm crying over it, my mom says it's make believe, but here it says it's based on true events. And I was like, what? And I remember uh, looking into, you know, the real story behind it. And that led me to the other things, you know, like obviously Hans Holzer and, and uh, uh, Lloyd Arabach and uh, uh, other researchers and, and books. Yeah. And yeah, that, that got me started. And then by, I'd say 12 uh, or 13, started following uh, Ed and Lorraine Warren quite a bit. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was, was awesome. Uh, I spent from probably age 12 to, I want to say 17 or 18, um, just going to their talks and going to their dinners and everything they would do, I'd go to it, you know, because I'm in New England. I'm super jealous right now. Yeah, I, I couldn't drive. My mom would, would drop me off, you know, and, and let me go to my little uh, paranormal. Set. You know, back then, if paranormal wasn't in the place it is now, you know, here I am going to see the Warrens, but there was literally 30 people there. You know, if that was today, yeah. could you imagine there would be uh, 1,500 people in, in that room? At you know? least. Yeah, but there was 30 or, or 40 people there, maybe 50, 60, you know, sometimes. By the age of uh, 18, I, I had... Uh, worked with uh, Ed and Lorraine on a few cases. And uh, that's when I met uh, John Zappas. So I actually met John Zappas when I was a, a young lad. I was probably 15, uh, 14 or 15, the first time I met John Zappas, who is Ed and Lorraine's uh, nephew, uh, and also, you know, haunted collector, and he was a demonologist, very amazing fellow. Yeah. And then from there, you know, just sort of kept going on that route. That was a very brief time. You know, I only worked with them on, on maybe two cases. Um, they were both my cases that I handed off to them and they, they accepted <gasps> them and took what? them. Yeah, it was really, it was super cool. Uh, and they continued uh, on it. Uh, uh, it was great. Uh, went to the, one time we had the Union Cemetery graveyard that they made quite popular with the white lady and uh, investigated that graveyard with them once. Uh, that was, was super cool. And then uh, fast forward, now I have my own team, this sort of thing, and, and uh, I joined forces with Jay, right? Yeah. Uh, Jay Haas. And uh, I was, I think I was 19 or 20. Jay and I uh, started working together. It was called, uh, the name of the team was Rhode Island Paranormal at the time. Rip, <laughs> clever. And uh, that was, you know, Jay had his, his, his team there and, and I was working with them. Uh, and then Grant came along and, uh, you know, literally said to Jay, like, hey, your website needs some work. Uh, I'm a webmaster. Let me give you a new website. <laughs> it's the true story. Uh, and uh, Jay was like, yeah, sure. 
Absolutely. And, and Grant became a part of the team. And uh, then the name changed to the Atlantic Paranormal Society. Uh, and I still had my team, New England Paranormal, but we were sort of a conglomerate, if you will. Uh, and then just kept going and going uh, from there. Yeah. That's how I That's sort amazing. of... Yeah. And here I am. And that was... I mean, gosh, I've been an investigator with Jay uh, since 1998, you know, so. That's kind of the most amazing how I got into the paranormal story ever. Oh, get out of here. No way. You had me at Ed and Lorraine, man. <laughs> it's been a, very, uh, been a very fun, very fortunate for anybody who, you know, wants to be involved in, in the paranormal, that sort of thing. Uh you know, I've had some some good pages, been very fortunate. Yes. I, myself, at 20 years old, was still terrified of all this stuff and thought everything happened like the movie The Poltergeist. But now my thoughts have been changed <laughs> and it's not scary. And nine times out of 10, it's beautiful, at least for me. Absolutely. And, and you know, it does kind of happen like the movie Poltergeist, but in the eyes of the investigators, like when they first are about to go in the room and the two investigators are like, one time, we caught a truck moving an inch over the course of like an hour. And then he's like, oh yeah, opens the door and everything's, so it doesn't happen like that, but the way they think it happens is, is more, you know, along the lines of, of how it goes down. You know? I, I do blame that movie for my very late blooming into this, this wonderful world we call paranormal. And I'm still waiting to walk into a kitchen and the chairs are all stacked on top of each other. I, I love that movie so much. Oh, I mean, yeah. I hated it when I was 12 and I saw it, but now I'm just like, oh my God, this is everything. Oh, i tell you what, uh, and, and not to keep on the paranormal journey story, but since you brought up Poltergeist, uh, I had a fortunate uh, situation to uh, the gentleman who wrote the book Poltergeist, Dr. William G. Roll, who sort of, correlated the emf theory to you know the paranormal and and uh i went to the ryan research center uh and did a, an energy study with him uh, for about a week and it was so fantastic and he taught me so much about energy and the paranormal and and if you don't know kitsy someone you know in the field uh want to take what's behind that movie that sort of got you a little scared of it I read his book, Poltergeist, if you haven't. It's what the movie was oh, wow. based off of. And follow his his work. And Dr. William G. Roll, he's, uh, he's, he's dead now, sadly. But uh, oh. yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's, a, he's a pioneer uh, for sure uh, in this, this field. Very cool. Dude, you are like an onion, all the layers, or parfait, whichever you prefer. That's my Shrek <laughs> reference, by the way. <laughs> uh, you're crazy. Thank you. I mean, it's crazy. Absolutely. I'm crazy. <laughs> I appreciate you so much doing this, Steve. And I'm, like I said, I'm so happy for your success. And not that I have any claim to it, but I'm super proud of you. And I love when good things happen to good people. So go you. Oh, thanks, Kitsy. Same here. I'm happy to see you uh, doing what you love in, in the paranormal and with everything else that you're so successful. And it's, it's quite nice to see. Well, thank you. And I cannot wait to we're back out there and I get to see you on the road again and all the stuff and all the things. Um, let's go ahead and give one more time the information for uh, Ghost Nation and for the documentary. Yeah. Uh, Ghost Nation uh, premieres Wednesday, April 22nd on the Travel Channel, 8 p.m., a two-hour episode. And uh, it's... Um, it's it's really good. It's it's different than season one. Uh, a lot more uh, sort of, um, you know, we, we worked out the kinks, if, if you will. It's uh, quite a, a good show in terms of history, in terms of the paranormal, all of that. And um, The House in Between documentary, it's available for pre-order now on iTunes, uh, but comes out everywhere May 5th. So wherever else you watch movies, uh, May 5th, you can you can see it house in between. And I cannot recommend either more than I already have, but thanks again, Steve. <laughs> and uh, everybody check out all the stuff and all the things. Steve is even more amazing than I ever thought he could be. So thanks again, Steve. All right, Kissy, take care. Thank you. Oddity Files is an independent production. Intro music created by DJ Jimmy. Wah, wah. 2020 artwork created by me, Kitsy Duncan. 
The opinions expressed in this podcast are ours and ours alone. Well, maybe yours too. If you like the show and would like to support us, visit oddityfiles.com and click on support or go to patreon.com slash oddityfiles. Every little bit helps with both the podcast and the TV show. You can also support us by watching Oddity Files on Amazon Prime. It's free to Prime members and dirt cheap to those who aren't. You can find us on all the social media sites at Oddity Files. Keep spreading the word by sharing, retweeting, and reposting. Join our Oddity Files Facebook group by searching Oddity Files Fan Group and click join. We'll approve you as soon as we can. All weirdos are welcome. Not into that social media stuff? Tell your coworkers, family, even the weird guy who just won't stop talking to you in line for coffee. Oh, and grandma, your grandma will love us. We appreciate each and every one of you. And if it weren't for you, we have no idea what we would do with our lives. If you have a story you'd like to submit, send it on in at oddityfilescrew at gmail.com. Also, send in story ideas, silly, weird memes, or just positive vibes to oddityfilescrew at gmail.com. You can also call in and leave that in a voicemail. Call us at 317-300-6699. To contact us about an appearance, reach out at kitsy at oddityfiles.com. When you have a sec, rate, review, and subscribe. We know it doesn't sound like much, but it really helps us get up there on the podcasting charts. And remember, kids, weird is the new cool. Ghost on. Um, why are you still here? Go on. Get out of here. Turn it off. It's done. Really? I swear. Go. Get. Serious. I'm out of here.